Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kaluno Gaming Playing Satisfactory. Today's episode is going to be a little bit more tutorial-like as I'm going to show you guys how I go about building circles and arcs um, or, you know, arcing foundations in my factory builds. So I start off with building a section of foundations at the height that I want and this could be off of a factory that I already have built but usually it's off of the world grid that I already have but I build it to the size that I want the outer dimension to be so I, what I'll do is I'll usually build out to both sides from that center point and then the main thing I try to do is make sure I have an even number so right here you can see I have five on one side six on the other it's not gonna work that well so I'll go over here and add one more and that way there I have an odd number and then I will delete the blocks in between the outer two and the middle one foundation. This just makes it a little bit easier in the end to delete everything and I'll show you when we get there. Then what you want to do is using the area actions mod you want to go ahead and set up a box in a clockwise fashion or a circle however many points you want to use you want to set up a box around all of the foundation pieces you want to rotate and you can be as precise with this as you want or as loose with it as you want it just you might have extra pieces that it'll end up copying. So here's the interface that you're going to be looking at, and then you want to go to the copy paste piece. So then here you're given these three arrows, actually four arrows, one the rotational arrow, the vertical arrow, and the two horizontal arrows. And they correspond to the same letters in here, so white with white, green with green, red with red, blue with blue. And what you want to do then is use the Z is the rotation. So you'll put a number in there and then hit rotate and hit either preview to preview what that's going to look like or okay to go ahead and build what you are copying so in this case you can see i added 90 and it did 90 degrees if i go ahead and do 45 degrees it's now going to take even the ones that just did 90 and do those at 45. so you can continue this process um, by using half of the previous number to create a circle that way i don't use this method as much just because Sometimes you're left with a gap, and I'm pretty sure this, will end, this one will end up with a gap, um, but I can show you going through that process. The nice thing is you can use N on your keyboard when you're playing Satisfactory to bring up an in-game calculator. It's kind of a search tool, quick search, but if you go ahead and type in your math there, it will use a calculator there. Just be careful, sometimes the math isn't 100% correct, um, but usually doing these simple calculations, it's, it's pretty accurate. So you can see here the gaps on the outer circle like this. If I were to go ahead and copy it one more time, you can see it doesn't look as good. You know, I, I like to have the corners on the outer part of the circle meet up as closely as possible rather than having a overlap. So you can see here having that massive overlap just doesn't look as nice in my opinion, but it might work well for a build that you're currently working on. And as you can see there, I used the preview, and then all you have to do is hit the X button up at the top to exit out of the preview and not actually build it. You can see here though, if I were to build this circle, you know, four blocks smaller, so two on each side, um, it actually lines up pretty well. So you could actually use this method um, as well to create kind of like a blueprint. I did this in my circular coal generators. I kind of used the area actions to create a blueprint and then actually placed all my blocks myself rather than using the area actions just using them as a blueprint and deleting all of the area action blocks after the fact and since we're still in here you can see i'll just complete this circle real quick um, just to kind of show you i think it looks nicer when you have the outer pieces meeting up it's less of that kind of glitchy flickering going on so it looks a little bit nicer once again, that's my opinion. You may find uses though, having them overlap in your builds. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that and I'll go ahead and show you a different circle of a different size. So this one here will build a smaller circle this time. 
So as you can see, you can use this on any size circle that you want. If you wanted to, you could probably make a circle the entire size of the map. Um, I've seen some circular train builds on Reddit, and technically if you wanted to, as long as you built the base foundations to get that, like the get the piece to copy and rotate, you could actually build a train station or a giant circular platform around the entire world to build your trains off of. Could be a cool idea, but might take a little bit of time. So as you can see here, this is a smaller one, just really quick. And I don't usually use them this small just because it ends up putting a lot of pieces in here, as you can see, trying to delete this. So I would never really practically use this in my build. Once again, you might have a use for it. This is just kind of to show you how I build them. I've been getting a lot of questions on Reddit recently about how I go about building circles. So I figured I'd just make a video solely about it. All right, let's go ahead and build a larger circle this time. And this time I'm going to go ahead and build it as I would. Um, and I can also show you if you're building for trains, this is how I, I would also go about doing it. So that way there, if you want just like a 90 degree bend, but you don't want like the smallest bend, you can go ahead and use this method to build those train curves. So one thing I want to do here is just count out how many I have here. I want to make sure I have an even, sorry, an odd number. Even numbers don't work as well because you have the two blocks in the middle. It's a weird center point. And it just doesn't line up with some other things as nicely. If you're building factories on an even number, you might need to do it with an even amount. But the way I figured that out is I count blocks from each side you know, to delete. And you can see here, I had two in the middle. That's because I messed up on counting, but just to kind of show you, that's how you would want it to be if you do have an even number factory. If, I think most people end up using an odd number for factories. That way there they can have doors and stuff in the middle. So when you're doing it this way, you want to just make sure you have the two blocks on the outside and then one block in the middle. So as you can see, I keep just adding one from each side or the same amount from each side. Then I'll go ahead and delete those. Now, the way I go about it is more precise. So I like to select the corners of the pieces I'm going to copy. That way there I have a little bit more control over how many I copy and how far of a turn I want to do or how far of a curve I want to make. So you can see here, we'll figure out the math real quick for how many we need. So I'll just pick a number, say like 10 degrees, and I'll hit preview. So you can see down here, there's a pretty big gap in that. So what I wanna do is maybe we'll do half of that, so we'll do five. And that's perfect. So you can see out here, these little iron pieces on the edge of the foundation, or I don't know what type of metal they are actually, um, they line up. And that's kind of what I'm looking for when I do my circles. So. I'll accept that, I like that, and we'll go ahead and do a multiple of five every time. So the next one's gonna be 10. And just to show you real quick, you can see those two line up as well. So now going back to it, we're gonna do a multiple of 10 every single time, or sorry, a multiple of five every single time. So five, 10, 15, 20, and so on. Now, at any point, if you start creating them like this, you can see how that would make a nice curve in a train. What you would do is for the track, you'd have it be at the center of the beginning piece and then at the center of the end piece. And then that way there, the train track should follow these foundations right down the center. And you can do them at 45 degrees. You can do them at 15 degrees. You can do them at 90 degrees. Really, however you have your turns set up, you can have foundations underneath them then the entire way. So normally on a train layout, I would do this for up to 90 degrees. 
I like to do it step by step. That way there I know I have one in each spot and I don't have duplicates. I don't have pieces going over. I don't need to delete too many things. However, you can see here when I get to 90, I'll go ahead and copy the entire thing. So if you were making this into just a circle, you can go ahead and make part of the circle and then just copy the entire thing and rotate it once. Or you can highlight a larger section and maybe do say five, then 10, then 20, then 40, and just keep doubling the number as you go until you have a circle. So you can see here, you can add as many points as you want. Once you have it, you copy, put in how many degrees you want to copy it to, and then bam, there's your circle. So you can see here now, this to me looks a little bit nicer, have everything that lines up. The only thing left to do is get rid of this little hockey puck that it creates here in the center. Um, beyond that, you can fill these circles in. You would just have to go ahead and pick the piece that lines up with the rest of your factory or whichever direction that you want it to line up with and then just start filling these pieces in. Sometimes you have to be a little bit clever with where they line up. Sometimes you need maybe a double ring so sometimes you might have to come back through the center here and lay out another foundation block through the inner ring and then do the grid system or sometimes you might just have to get fancy with it as I'm showing you here and figure out a way that's going to make these inner grids not extend past this ring. So you can see there in the one piece how it would go across. You would just maybe come back and place it on the ring instead of the grid, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions about it, go ahead and leave it in the comments. But that's mainly all I wanted to show in this video. You can copy these rings up and down as well, but really that's kind of all I really wanted to show is how I made circles and I guess I'll catch you next time as we continue building our big or larger factory. So this will be Kalino Gaming signing off for the day. Have a good day.